Hi, Martin Turner here. This week we have the first of two lectures on Focus on the Enterprise. We start by looking at how we can simplify our forecasting by focusing on the Enterprise. We see there are five great videos for weeks 9 to 10 on Focus on the Enterprise. And one of these, Economic Profit for the Enterprise, shows us how we can focus on the enterprise, on the operating activities of our firm, when using the economic profit framework. We then work through how we can simplify the economic profit framework by focusing on the enterprise, so we can focus on forecasting abnormal operating income. First, let's look at how we can simplify forecasting for our firms. Hi, Martin Turner here, and welcome to the Week 9 Lecture for Act 13017, Financial Statement Analysis. Today we're going to be focusing on the enterprise. We're going to be looking at, well, we review Week 8 first of all, and then we're going to see how focusing on the enterprise can simplify our forecasting task a lot. As you're starting to focus on the economic and business drivers and forecasting them and connecting back to the accounting drivers, focusing just on the operations of the firm, which is what we'll be doing, and valuing the enterprise simplifies the forecasting task quite a bit. And we'll be looking at how we will be looking at the economic profit model by focusing just on the operations. And we'll have a look at how, just theoretically, and how we're able to do that as we focus on abnormal operating income and not abnormal earnings. Now, last week we were looking at predicting the future and we saw that there were the accounting drivers of the uh, financial statements and the economic business drivers of the economic and business realities. And we were focusing on the economic and business drivers, how we need to move beyond the numbers. Accounting is not about the numbers. Actually, nobody really cares about the numbers per se. What we care about is what the numbers are telling us about the business. If we change the accounting standards or adjust different things, we can have different numbers. Same business. But it's not the numbers that are the key, it's what they tell us. So we're going to be moving beyond the accounting drivers of the financial statements to the economic and business drivers of the economic and business realities. And that is what we're doing uh, this week. And also what happens about beyond the forecast horizon. So focusing on the enterprise in the economic profit model. Now there's a great video, Economic Profit for the Enterprise, that's in the videos for week nine to 10. And focusing on the risks of a firm's operations. They don't change with changes in leverage. And you can have a look at the cost of capital for operations and more on cost of capital, those two videos. The links are live also on the slides. So we can simplify our forecasting by focusing on the enterprise and focusing on the risks of the operations rather than that, and these risks don't change with leverage. So with focusing on the enterprise, we'll be focusing on the operating activities of the firm, not on the financial activities. And we'll be valuing the enterprise, not the company, uh, which includes the operating and financial activities. We'll be focusing on the enterprise, which is just the operating activities. Very common when we're valuing businesses to focus on the operations. So our economic profit framework is now the value of equity equals the book value of equity plus not the present value of abnormal earnings, but plus the present value of abnormal operating income. So that's where we are now with the economic profit framework. And see the video, Economic Profit of the Enterprise, uh, which can help take you through how we get there. Also have a look at chapter six, section 6.1 of the study guide. Now, by looking at the economic profit framework as the value of equity equals the book value of equity plus the present value of abnormal operating income, we're making the assumption that the financial activities do not add value to the firm. 
Another way of saying that is that the value of net financial obligations equals the book value of net financial obligations. That is the amount of net financial obligations in the balance sheet. So that's true that the value equals the book value where net financial obligations in the book are close, are at or close to the market value in the balance sheet. Now there are some great benefits to focusing on the enterprise. It simplifies the forecasting task in a number of significant ways. We don't need to forecast the financial activities of our firm. We can simply focus on the operating activities. So there's less work to do. And we're gonna be focusing on the operating activities, which are the areas most likely in our firms to be adding value. So it helps us focus on key areas and put more effort into analyzing those aspects of the firm and not considering the financing activities. This focus can help us to better analyze the key drivers of value. Also, there can be some deception with the financial activities. We can a firm can increase its financial leverage and it may appear to be adding value when it is not. It may be able to um, cause some of the uh, ratios and so on to shift as if the uh, performance was improving when all that's happened is they put in some financial leverage. Also, by focusing on the enterprise, we don't need to adjust the cost of capital with changes in leverage. Cost of capital of equity is, is, um, is influenced by leverage. And so, but when we focus on the enterprise, we don't need to worry about changes in leverage. So there are some significant advantages in simplifying our forecasting by focusing on the enterprise. And that continues with the, there are significant challenges of extending our forecasts beyond our horizons. It becomes increasingly more difficult. And we can simplify this task, both in terms of our continuing values and on our forecasts, we'll be focused on five-year forecasts. It all becomes more doable in practice if we focus on the enterprise. There's always a caution, Alfred North Whitehead, seek simplicity, which is what we're doing, focusing on the operations. Seek simplicity and distrust it. So we do need to keep eyes in the back of our head. There might be some times when the financial activities become very important, particularly if, uh, if the financial viability of a firm is starting to be affected. Um, so we're focusing on the operations, but we just need to keep in the back of our mind that we might be missing something important if uh, in the financial activities. So we just need to be a little bit cautious. So as I said, the economic profit model, we're now focusing on the value of equity equals a book value of equity plus the present value of abnormal operating income, which replaces the present value of abnormal earnings. So, the value of equity equals the book value of equity plus the present value of abnormal earnings, which is where we were, uh, which was the economic profit forecast. But if we forecast abnormal operating income to equal zero, the net assets at market value do not contribute to abnormal earnings. So we don't want to, we don't in include those. It's the present value of abnormal earnings from the net assets not at market value because the net assets at market value don't contribute to abnormal earnings. They're just part of the normal earnings. And if we take the position that financial activities not add value, then the present value of financial net assets equals their market value. And so we don't need to include them in the present value of abnormal earnings. Now, net operating assets are not usually at market value. And so equity equals net operating assets minus net financial obligations. And if the value of, we, and we can shift our model to the value of net operating assets, which we're focusing on, rather than equity. Oops, 
rather than equity, you can focus on net operating assets, their book value, and then the present value of abnormal operating income, that's what's usually material. It's the abnormal earnings from net operating assets. So if we see the value of equity equals the value of net operating assets minus the value of net financial obligations, we saw that we could look at the value of net operating assets as equal to net operating assets plus the present value of abnormal operating income. And if we consider that the value of net financial obligations equals their book value, net financial obligations, if, if, um, if, if they um, call it market value, then the, we can rearrange all that. The value of equity equals net operating assets plus present value of abnormal operating income, which replaces, that's the value of net operating assets, minus net financial obligations. That's the book value of net financial obligations, which is the value of net financial obligations. So we can write the value of equity out that way. Rearranging it a little bit, we get the net operating assets minus net financial obligations, brackets plus the present value of abnormal operating income. And so we can express that as the value of equity equals the book value of equity, which is net operating assets minus net financial obligations, plus the present value of abnormal operating income. So here we are now focusing on the enterprise and we've replaced the present value of abnormal earnings with the present value of abnormal operating income. And if we write that out in long form, you can see that the value of equity equals the book value of equity plus the present value of abnormal operating income, which is abnormal operating income in year one divided by WAC, Abnormal operating income, the two divided by WAC squared, abnormal dot, 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 to abnormal operating income in year T, divided by WAC to year T, plus the continuing value in year T, divided by WAC to the 10th power, T power. So our economic profit abnormal operating income model and our abnormal operating income equals return on net operating assets minus WAC minus one, all in square brackets, times net operating assets. And our return on net operating assets equals profit margin times asset turnover. And the change in net operating assets equals the change in sales times one over asset turnover. So this economic profit abnormal operating income model helps focus us in on these key accounting drivers of value. So what have we looked at today? We've seen that by now we're focusing on the operations for the economic profit model. The discounted cash flow model is always focusing on the operations, but also we've got the economic profit model. We're just focusing on the abnormal operating income and on the, and we'll be coming up with an enterprise value using both of our frameworks. And this focus on the enterprise simplifies forecasts. It reduces the number of things we need to forecast and it makes it, um, helps us to focus on the areas of the operations where value is being created or destroyed. All right, well, thank you very much, everyone. And I look forward to working with you in the coming week. Bye for now. Bye-bye.